every single day for the foreseeable future, a couple hundred million, two, three, four hundred million dollars of Bitcoin are going into cold storage and they're not coming out. And that supply dynamic is just not understood right now. Everybody's like, oh, you know, the ETF was such a failure. What are you talking about? On, on every measure, it was a wild success. On every measure, on trading volume, on, on inflows. You know, today, I think it's like the fifth highest uh, uh, daily inflow of all of them, including the big dogs like Triple Q and VOO. So just silly. The spot Bitcoin ETF market is expected to grow in the coming years, with some analysts predicting it to grow to $100 billion. Regarding new money coming into the Bitcoin space, Morgan Creek Capital CEO Mark Yusko has said these new products could open the door for as much as $300 billion to enter the market. The iShares Bitcoin Trust from BlackRock now holds more than $1 billion worth of Bitcoin reaching the milestone just five days after the exchange-traded fund began trading on January 11th. In another related development, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust ETF recorded notable outflows over the past week, with billions exiting the fund. According to data by BitMEX Research, the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF, GBTC, recorded a gigantic net outflow of $579.6 million on Thursday, January 18th. Hence, GBTC's net outflow surged to $2.2 billion. Meanwhile, in a post on X, James Butterfill, the head of research at CoinShares, revealed that the total outflows of GBTC amounted to $1 billion on day five. For the fifth day of trading, the total net outflow from all 12 spot Bitcoin ETFs amounted to $131.6 million. On the other hand, the total net inflow this week is recorded to be $131.7 million. The inflow figure is weak, considering the massive outflows from the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF. Now let's delve into a few key points from the interview to understand Yusko's perspective and how these outflows might impact the cryptocurrency market. But before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. There's a whole bunch of holders that bought GBTC when the price was 10, 15, you know, K. They're not selling, <laughs> irregardless of, of what the, the fee is. You can charge them 10%. They're not going to sell because you're not going to take a tax hit and pay a huge amount of those gains away just to save you know 1% or you know, 120 basis points. And, and clearly, that's what Grayscale was banking on. Now, all the money in the tax-exempt accounts, IRAs, retirement accounts, that's, that's going. And, you know... By most estimates that I've seen, that's about 15, 20 percent. I don't think anybody knows exactly uh, of their assets. And I think what what people just don't appreciate, I don't think they appreciate, is you know, grayscale, yes, it was $25 billion. Yeah. WM, but they didn't raise $25 billion. Yeah, I don't know the exact number, but my gut is it's around 10-ish billion. And that money came in in the last bull run. And what people just, they've forgotten, that big first move from 10 to 60 before the famous Elon quote, most of that was GBTC, right? You had, you know, six, eight, billion dollars coming into a market that was still, you know, reeling from the previous bear market before the last bear market. And, you know, someone, I was, somebody was, was uh, going after Eric uh, on Twitter yesterday saying, you know, your, your numbers are wrong. I've never seen a $3 billion inflow without, you know, prices mooning. He said, well, you know, like said, Holmes, the, 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 the numbers are right. So yeah, you're just missing a variable. And that variable that this person is not paying attention to is the sales. And the other thing that people aren't talking about, and I don't understand because it happens every single year, is Chinese New Year. Mm. Chinese New Year is coming and they got to fill the red envelopes with cash. So they sell Bitcoin. And this year, 
the sales are going to be worse than a normal year because you had big gains. And then we're going to have another one in you know late March, early April, where people are going to have to sell to pay Uncle Sam. So these seasonal things, they happen. And the good news, you know, like my socks, the penguins are going to be out there snatching it all up and stuffing it away at Coinbase. And, you know, <laughs> the amount of money that's going to be made, both in fees and transactions, is, is going to be really good for these companies. And I think people are just lost in the weeds for some, re- some reason. And I mean, it's our own fault, community-wise. You know, I actually uttered the word God candle, just like everybody else. And that was, you know, clearly not smart <clears throat> because my 30 billion number was never a day one number, right? 30 billion is 0.1% of the 30 trillion. That was never a day one number. That was over time. The labor market continued to show surprising resiliency in the early days of 2024, with initial jobless claims posting an unexpected drop last week. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits dropped 16,000 to a seasonally adjusted 187,000 for the week ended January 13th, the lowest level since September 2022. The unexpected decline in initial claims reported by the Labor Department on Thursday added to strong retail sales growth in December painting an upbeat picture of the economy. It could make it difficult for the Federal Reserve to start cutting interest rates in March, as financial markets anticipate. Despite the widespread unemployment, Yusko believes that many individuals, particularly those laid off from companies like Google, may choose to refrain from filing claims and might not actively pursue unemployment benefits. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. I do believe that the the lowest level of employment is super tight. I mean, I see it everywhere. I tried to go to brunch this weekend um, with my wife. You know, our son was out at a, a play date and we're like, oh, we'll have a, we'll have a, you know, a date brunch. And um, so uh, we show up and we are number 76 on the wait list. This is Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I, I wasn't sure there were 76 families that went out to brunch. That's nuts. That's, I mean, that's, two yeah. hours, Michael, two hours. And the food is good. It's a place called Snooze. I mean, food was good, but uh, it just blew me away. But then when we got inside, I found out why. They didn't have enough wait staff. There are a bunch of empty tables, but they didn't have enough wait staff to to you know bring the food out and even when we got in <laughs> you know the manager finally came over to us and said all right let me get your drinks and i've had multiple experiences whether it's retail um you know restaurants so i do believe and probably this is despite the the you know this be not not favorably perceived but despite the illusion that there's some invasion at the border um, I think our immigration policy has changed a lot in the last eight years, and we just don't have people because the boomers aren't going to do that job, right? It's just not. And a lot of and and then there's the the there's this trough between the boomers and the millennials that you know the, the, there was there was a baby bust, and so there's just not enough people. And maybe part of it is, you know, it's a college town, the college kids, they're not actually going to do the work. They, they got credit cards and they're going to go, you know, do the brunch, but I don't know. So I, I, I don't think there's a lot of unemployment at that level, but there's a huge amount of unemployment, but I don't think they file claims. Like if you're laid off from Google, I just don't believe those people are going and stand in line to file a claim. I don't yeah. think, I don't think, yeah. I, I, and it could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. Having reached $49,000 on ETF launch day, Bitcoin did not keep the momentum up for long. Bitcoin short-term holders panic after Bitcoin price drops toward $40,000 and traders warn that worse may come. In a recent interview, 
Orly Bartir, Principal Research Analyst at Nansen, said she expects lower-fee ETFs to attract more inflows in the short term. What is your stance? Your input is valuable. Share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.